Welcome to the start of the Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 Midterm 2 Practice Problem screencasts. Um, I'll be introducing each problem generally with a, a brief description, reading through the text, and then I'll be working each part of a problem, and each of those will be in a separate screencast. Okay, so let's just read through problem number two, Canopticon. Uh, by the way, as always, the uh, titles here are not particularly important. Please, please, please feel free to ignore the titles. Okay. Classify each of the following recurrences, assumed to have base cases of t of 1 equals t of 0 equals 1, so constant size base cases for small values of n, into one of the three cases of the master's theorem, the cases in which leaves dominate, in which the root dominates, and in which the work is balanced across levels, or indicate that the master theorem does not apply. So before we can dive into this problem, we should probably take a look at the master theorem. It is earlier in the document here, so I'm just going to jump back up and look at our summary of the master theorem. So here is our summary of the master theorem. For currents like t of n equals a t of n over b plus f of n, where a is greater than or equal to 1 and b is greater than 1, the master theorem states three cases. So this right here is going to be central to checking whether the master theorem applies. We're going to need to have something that looks like this. Now, it doesn't say it here explicitly, but we have talked about it previously. We don't care about floors or ceilings in here. So floors and ceilings don't matter. But otherwise, we want something of this form. And if it's not of this form, then the master theorem is not going to apply. Now, it's got three cases here. So hopefully, these correspond to the three cases we're talking about. But we need to figure out which case is which. So we have this root dominates case, the leaves dominates case, and the balanced case. And again, we've talked about this previously, but just briefly, this case right here says f of n, the extra work, is an element of big O of n to the c, where c is something less than log base b of a. Okay, so why is log base b of a important? Well, remember, when, when we draw this tree, which it might have more than two children at any given level, but I'll, I'll just draw two to be illustrative. Da, 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 da. Uh, we're eventually going to get down to the leaf level, where there will be a lot of leaves. The height of this tree always has something to do for recurrences of this form with b. The larger b is, the faster we break down the problem, the faster we get to the base case. So the height of this tree, as it turns out, is proportional to the log base b of n. Now, a is the number of children that each node has. So as a gets larger, then the width of the set of children gets larger. And at each level, the number of children is a times as large as it is at the previous level. So here we've got one node. Here we've got a nodes. Here we've got a squared nodes, and so on and so forth. So at this point, we have a to the log base b of n nodes. And it turns out that that is equal to n to the log base b of a. You can work that out. A good way to do it is just take the log of both of these sides, and you'll quickly see that these two sides are equal to each other. OK, so that's where this n to the log base b of a comes from. It counts the number of nodes in the leaves. And since each leaf node needs to take constant time for us to apply the master theorem, and that's another thing not stated in our little summary here, by the way, constant time base cases. So be sure you've got that. It doesn't have to be t of 0, t of 1. We just have to know that at some point we get down to constant time. But assuming all that, then the amount of time taken at the leaves is proportional to n to the log base b of a. So as it turns out, if we're in this case where f of n is in big O of n to the c, so, you know, roughly speaking, f of n is, is smaller than speaking in kind of broad asymptotic terms here, uh, n to the log base b of a. We end up being in this case where this is the term that dominates. So where does this term come from? Well, this is exactly what comes from our leaf case here. That's how much work is done at the leaves. So this is our leaf case. 
And basically what happens in this case is that the amount of total work at each level keeps going up and up and up. And a good way to think about that is that the amount of work at the root, well, that's just f of n, right? Well, if that f of n is, is smaller than, is asymptotically smaller than the work at the leaves, then the total work per level is going up as we go down the tree. Okay, so this is our leaf-dominated case. What's happening at this case? Well, in this case, f of n is in theta of n to the c log of n to the k, where c is log base b of a. So f of n is in theta n to the log base b of a with this log term attached to it, which we're not going to worry about too much here. Um, what really matters to us is this part. And this says basically that the amount of work at the root is very similar to the amount of work at the leaves. So at the leaves, we're still going to be spending n to the log base b of a work. And here we can see at the root, we're also effectively spending n to the log base b of a work with this log factor attached to the end. So in fact, the work at the root and the leaves is kind of balanced. And so what ends up happening is we get a bound that is this n to the c thing, n to the log base b of a, times a log factor. And that log factor comes in because we end up adding up work at each level, and there are log base b of n levels. So there are log n levels. So that's where a log factor comes from. And I'm not going to go into uh, why this works with this log of n to the k factor on the front here, but our usual case is where this is equal to 0. And when it is, there is no log factor in this part. And in this part, there's a log of n raised to the 1 power, so just a log of n factor, which is familiar from things like merge sort and binary search. Merge sort takes n log n time. Binary search takes log of n time. So this is our balanced case. f of n at the root is actually asymptotically similar to the amount of work being done at the leaves. And so we end up with balanced work throughout the tree, at each level of the tree. And so this last case had better be our root dominated case. And sure enough, it is. What we can see here is that the work at the root, f of n, is actually lower bounded by something bigger than the amount of work at the leaves. And so the work is actually going down across the levels. Now, again, there are some extra conditions here. There's this regularity condition on f of n. And you know most well-behaved functions that we would use are going to follow this regularity condition, but it's important to be able to check on it. But in the end, what we'll find is that the root dominates. And so all we really care about is the amount of work done at the root. And that is indeed theta of f of n. So this is our root dominance case. So basically, we're going to be coming back to a few things. We're going to come back to this big circle part up here to see if the master theorem applies. With some other caveats, we need these constant time base cases, but we were told we'll have that for all of our functions. So that turns out not to be a big problem in this particular case, but it is worth thinking about. And we've got this regularity condition uh, on the root dominated case. So that tells us whether the master theorem applies. And then beyond that, uh, we also want to know which case we fall into. This is our leaf case. This is our balanced case. This is our root case. So with that, we should be prepared to answer problem two.